Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another exciting episode of The Executive with Meg. Today I'm thrilled to welcome Adil Irshad, who is the Chief Operating Officer of EV Technology. Welcome. Thank you uh, so much, Meg. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for your kind words. Thank you. <laughs> so you've had a remarkable journey. I mean, you are a, a very well-renowned um, sustainability maven as well as an EV ecosystem expert. So I guess the main question would be is, what is the driving force behind your passion for sustainability? What sparked it? Okay, uh, it's a very significant questions, uh, question. And uh, a lot of time they ask me, uh, in our industry of e-mobility, uh, we, we say it in this way, it's a race of chicken and egg uh, in terms of uh, EV domain. Uh, if you go to the history or if you learn the economics, how do we reach here? You need to understand that first of all, electric cars or not all electric cars are 100% clean. Or, and no car can be 100% clean. And uh, what we're trying to say here is that if you are using an EV, you are doing a bit of your part towards climate goal, sustainability, uh, for having uh, less CO2 emissions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because there's, there's a big debate on this, that uh, are they really uh, emission-free uh, because of the entire process of procurement and production uh, it, it, it's also advancing to reach towards uh, renewable, sustainable energy so that we can say, yes, 100% clean. Mm. Okay. Uh, again, if you go back, how do we reach here is that uh, the Paris Agreement is a binding climate, climate change agreement, uh, which was adopted at COP21 mm -hmm. uh, in December 12, 2015, uh, which was effective in November 4, 2016. Uh, what is this agreement saying? Uh, this agreement says that achieving uh, uh, its goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 requires a 45% emission reduction by 2030 and reaching net zero by 2050. Mm. Uh, given that transportation uh, co contributes to 14% of global emissions, it is imperative uh, to transition to the sector of electric and renewable energy based mobility solutions. Uh, the shift is essential. Uh, for civic, uh, for significance uh, towards the significance of reducing emissions uh, and uh, net zero future. Mm. Yeah. So these are the facts that we have reached here uh, towards uh, electric mobility. There is a pa Paris Climate Change Agreement has been signed. It's been effective. Uh, it says very clearly about achieving 1.5 C uh, uh, global goals. And in terms of that, 14% uh, as I said, transportation is your factor. Mm. Yeah. And of course, you've got extensive experience in the MENA and the GCC region. So what were some of the unique challenges as well as opportunities that you have encountered um, when it comes to the adoption of EV in, in the region, if you had to compare it to the, the rest of the world? Okay, so again, that's a, that's a very uh, wide question. Mm. Yeah. So first of all, uh, any EV market globally or regionally is challenging, mm. number one. Two, and it's evolving constantly each and every day. Uh, every day we hear the news uh, from global, uh, globally and regionally that a lot of uh, EV innovation is coming into the market. Uh, having said that, uh, regionally, yes, we do have quite a few challenges in terms of uh, charging infrastructure. Uh, these challenges now, Oman is doing a wonderful job in that. Uh, Oman has uh, been uh, top uh, uh, Oman has introduced the top regulations for that okay. uh, in, in the, out of all uh, out of GCC region. Uh, UAE is also uh, working a lot in terms of investment. Uh, KSA is the same. Mm. Uh, they are achieving their goals towards the vision. You need to understand that each region has its electrification goals. Mm. Oman has electrification goals. Uh, as I said, you know it has the best regulations in the region uh, uh, for towards EV adoption. Mm. So uh, regulations are in place. Uh, transitional goals are in place, the visions are, are in place. So the state has done its job. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to us uh, that we as consumers and uh, partners, what are what is our role? So mm -hmm. we are, we have to meet these challenges. Challenges are in terms of charging infrastructure. We need to play a role uh, to have charging infrastructure set in a way that, you know, rural urban areas, people can charge their car. Yes. One. And then you need to also come up with uh, vehicles at, uh, with, with different choices, SUV, sedan, saloon, 
and should be economical, uh, feasible to all different kinds of pockets and That's consumers. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, these, these are the things that I, I think that we need to address them. And a uh, lot of people are addressing, we are addressing them. We, have di- we are introducing different kind of cars. Uh, we have met a lot of challenges in terms of compliance as well and regulations as mm-hmm. well, uh, because you have to meet certain compliance and regulations. Uh, yeah. So, um, like you mentioned, it's very important to uh, make sure that EV is um, will, and the the charging stations they're accessible, correct? Yeah. But I think the biggest question, um, I mean, I can strongly relate to it as well, is how are we going to make it more affordable? to the everyday person within the societies? Okay, uh, so uh, firstly, uh, charging infrastructure is uh, globally, number one, uh, I think 70% or 80%, if I'm not correct, charging of vehicles, uh, e-mobility happens at home. Yes. Globally. This is your first uh, answer to the question. Second, yes, you need a charging infrastructure for masses, your consumers, your public, uh, based on uh, uh, living in rural and, uh, and power, rural and urban areas, uh, for that you need a charging infrastructure. But uh, I do not think that you know a lot of people would be looking into this option that where is my fuel station for fueling my car? Mm. You know, if you come out of your house, you don't think of the fuel station that I have to look for it. Mm. You just have to go for it and, and fill up your fuel tank. Similarly, it's the same case. If you're driving an uh, electric vehicle, you should know where to charge your car outside your house. True. Yeah. So that is probably a 30%, 40% role in the global market, or, or it will be definitely in the regional market. Mm. And that is, uh, region is working on it. The states are working on it. Government is working on it. We are working on it. And uh, we are installing charging solutions with the fuel operators in Oman. And it has been, uh, uh, these are all uh, DC fast chargers. Mm. And with regards to the EV value chain, how do you see it evolving in, let's say, the next five to 10 years? Oh, wow. Uh, this is, uh, in the next two to, to, to five, 10 years, uh, somebody asked me this question similarly just recently in one of mm. my event. And uh, I said that, you know, would you ask uh, a fuel co- uh, gasoline company the same question? Mm. Where do they stand in five to 10 years? So EV, uh, as I said in the beginning of this uh, podcast, that uh, we are evolving every day. My OEMs are evolving every day, innovating every day. They're inventors, manufacturers, people like BYD, people like Tesla, startups are there. They're also working on it every day and competing and coming up with IoT solutions, connected Mm -hmm. cars, autonomous vehicles, uh, vehicles based on artificial intelligence. These are the things that you are looking at in the coming five to 10 years, where I think uh, that uh, commercial fleet electrification uh, would be achieved very, uh, very much near. I mean, it's very much near to see True. commercial fleet electrification, where you're talking about trucks, buses, and uh, light uh, commercial vehicles. Mm. And then you're looking at sal- uh, saloon, sedan, and uh, luxury SUV vehicles. Mm. So in, in, in the five to 10 years, these, these are the segments that will grow. And it, it will not only grow as in terms of innovation as a vehicle, it will grow massively uh, based on IoT, uh, uh, IoT and uh, what, uh, autonomous and connected vehicles. Also, I would, I'm very curious to know, what are some of the exciting projects that are underway within EV technology? And what can we expect to see from you um, in the future, in the Oman market and on the global stage? Uh, EV technology, uh, which is a part of Seoul International Investment Group, has faced a lot of uh, challenges okay. uh, on its own scale. Uh, in terms of, in our organization, we, we saw a lot of reaction from our own people uh, towards shift of this technology. And uh, why are we going into electric vehicles? Uh, the point was to go sustainable and renewable energy uh, uh, to follow Oman Vision 2040 and Net Zero 2050. Uh, ultimately, that's a global scale. So on a, on a national scale, we, you can say Vision 2040 it was our goal. So we did that and we convinced our team, we spoke to our team that we need to go renewable and sustainable somehow. So we, 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 we did a lot of research mm. and then we found out that, you know, uh, Cars are favorite of people in the region. Mm. So why not? And it's sustainable. And uh, they're going renewable. So why not electric mobility and charging solutions? So we came in that. Uh, another part of the question was? Um, so what can we expect to see from okay. you in the future? Yeah. Okay. So th- this is how, how we came in. And 
we saw that there is a lot of market in the region uh, for electric mobility. Mm. The time when we started, nobody uh, was there in the market as 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 expertise as us. So we we faced a lot of a lot of you know challenges from people in terms of uh, nobody was ready, and uh, or, or a lot of people said that it's too early to do that, you know. Mm. And uh, but we 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 kept on doing some uh, we kept on doing these and uh, faced these challenges. A lot of obstacles were there in the market, and of course a uh, lot of our own. A lot of our own uh, OEMs who were startup like us, uh, due to pandemic, they shut down uh, due to financial crisis or collapse. Uh, lucky us because we're an investment group, we sustained during that time mm. uh, in Oman and in the region. So what we are doing right now is we are focusing towards uh, charging solutions mm. and charging infrastructure, specifically in Oman. We are working with uh, our own self, our own investment we are doing towards DC charging infrastructure. Uh, plus, we are also looking forward uh, to work with fuel operators. And we have worked with some fuel operator mm. for uh, DC charging solutions. And in the uh, future, what we look at, that if we establish a good, uh, feasible, reachable, uh, efficient, effective uh, charging solution to masses, then uh, definitely we can have EV adoption. Mm. And in that uh, term, uh, what uh, in terms of electric vehicles, we are working on uh, affordable cars, cars that uh, that can meet the requirements of uh, of normal people pockets, mm. uh, normal That's consumers. The thing, you know, yeah. and uh, a lot of people have this hype that electric cars are expensive. Not all of them are expensive. I think most people are only familiar with brands such as Tesla. I yeah. think people are not very well. I wouldn't say well, like very well informed about the different varieties and different brands on the market. There, there are a lot of uh, brands in the market uh, at the moment, also in Oman, uh, globally, regionally. Uh, there are a lot of brands other than Tesla. Uh, but we're not going to debate uh, about the brands here. No. Uh, yeah, so these uh, the brands are there. Uh, so I said awareness, education is there. That's so this cute. is my role. This is where I come in. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, I do a lot of, you know, awareness education programs. Uh, I take leadership role, visionary role in terms of regional and uh, uh, global uh, mm -hmm. development towards sustainability. A lot of people have um, this because a lot of people outside uh, or inside in the region, they are living in this dilemma that uh, EV adoption is coming. Are we ready for it? Uh, we need to prepare ourselves. It's not about you are ready for it. We need to prepare ourselves that the adoption is going to come to you, whether sure. you take it or leave it. Yes, and I think it's a lot to do with also the behavioral shifts that we have to take in order to go yeah. smooth, or like, you know, yeah. process with that. Yeah, it's not only electric vehicles. Uh, let yeah. me add here, uh, uh, as I said, the region, especially Oman, tops in hydrogen economy. Mm. Oman is doing wonderful uh, investments and uh, public awareness education in terms of investing into the hydrogen economy. And uh, there will be hydrogen cars. Mm. Uh, so not only that, so renewable, uh, sustainable, they're also working on the electric uh, grid to go renewable. Most you definitely. know, yeah. So there's a vision for it. Uh, so why all is this happening? It's just because preparing the people towards the adoption of renewable sustainable development, which is basically your vision 2040 and net zero 2050. Yes, 100%. And then also seeing as you are a leader, can you share um, any word of advice to young professionals who are looking to enter this field or this sector? What would you say to them? Uh, this is a very common question, Mike, you know, <laughs> that uh, I, I come across. We moment. need a proper quote yeah. from you. <laughs> uh, I, I, have, I have done some uh, university dialogue with uh, in UAE in Ajman. I just did, did some thesis with them uh, towards uh, autonomous vehicles. And also in Amman, I did a, a program for a technical university. And uh, they all asked me this. See, uh, I believe uh, in education from grassroots, number one. Uh, it should be from uh, your primary school, probably. Uh, your children need to educate. Uh, you, sorry, you need to educate your children uh, uh, from from the beginning, from the foundation level. Education starts at home. Ultimately. Education starts at home. That's why I always say sustainability begins at home. Mm -hmm. uh, through you, me, I, 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 and all of us together. So you need to start at the foundation level. You need to tell them about fossil fuel, the formation of fossil fuel, how it was formed. This is basically, you need to educate them from right there and then towards sustainable development. Mm -hmm. You need to tell them that these are the do's, these are the don'ts. Why? Because this is what we're doing. Same as Greta Thunberg or any other uh, uh, activist, yeah, activist mm -hmm. is talking about it. So you need to educate them from there. 
this is where you come in. Then the youth comes in because youth is, holds the power of the world on a global scale. Mm. Uh, if you empower your youth, you empower your women, you empower your uh, equality uh, in terms of education. Uh, I think uh, net zero 20 future, uh, I see that I live it already in it. Mm. If you create this uh, ambience, atmosphere, environment of sustainable development at the foundation level in your women, in your uh, youth, mm. you will start living in that. So sure. once you build this, I think uh, this is my message to youth mm. that start studying, uh, do your research, uh, behave, uh, learn to behave to your mother earth. Uh, if you would know how everything is formed, what are, what are green gas emissions, sorry, what, are, what is green mobility mm. or renewable energy or sustainable development, what are CO2 emissions, what is climate change agreement, what is COP21, what happened there and why we are all doing this. Mm. Just to save the planet Earth. Yeah, mm. of course, for a lot of people it's business. Uh, but again, th there is a bigger goal of vision uh, towards saving the Earth. There is no planet B. This mm. is the only planet we're living in. True. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, they have, of course, been doing a lot of research on uh, which other planet would be able to sustain human life. And I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that, how okay. promising that may be, or... See, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I just read a few days back and uh, Japan is uh, making a rail mm -hmm. to the moon. A rail? Rail. So, so train, sorry, train. Train. Train oh. to the moon. I just read it. I, I, I can share with you the article. Uh, so they're working on it. So... How hmm? would that... Can yeah. you please so, yeah, yeah, yeah. share so this, this? This is my question. This is my question. In terms of transformation, innovation, people, these are the thoughts of human can go. Mm. You can, it means you can, they can achieve. That's why they said that. Mm. Or probably it's doable or not doable. I, I cannot debate on that. Uh, but there's a proper article and they said they, they set the timeline also when they're going to achieve it. Mm. Uh, so having said that, uh, innovative goals, transformation goals are required for the growth of this industry, number one. You can think of anything towards your transformation and innovation as a vision, and you have to get there. That's why I said a lot of time that if you take me to point B, I'm talking about myself here, if you take me to point A, sorry, and tell me that you want to reach to point B, I can take you to point B. Are you ready for it? Mm. The question is, are you ready for it? That is. The so this thing. is the question. So this is these, these are the things that we need to tell ourselves. Uh, innovation, uh, transformation, is happening, it is coming up. Uh, we need to be ready for it. Mm. We need to prepare ourselves. Yeah. Mm. And what would be your advice to um, the young students? Uh, well, let's start with primary school or high school, for example. What would be your advice to them? I did that. To uh, be the, yeah, yeah. the role, like, I mean, ultimately we role model the behavior, but how could they in their day-to-day -day activities change their behavior? Uh, I'll give you a small example. As a child, when I was, uh, uh, my, back in the time, uh, there was a, so a piggy bank, uh, mm -hmm. you know, my dad asked me to open the account. I think I was in sixth or seventh grade, something like that. And I remember it was HSBC or some bank. I don't remember that. And uh, I did not get the goal of HSBC or the, or the bank that time. So what was the goal of the bank? The goal of the bank was to make me their future consumer. Mm -hmm. So what we need here is we need to deliver to primary schools, secondary schools, go to them, uh, educate them about the products that they can use uh, uh, to, uh, that can reduce CO2 emissions, waste management, go towards sustainable development, go towards renewable energy, be it your electricity, be your car, mm -hmm. be your uh, disposal of trash, how to behave towards Earth. And what are, what, are do, what are do's and don'ts for plastic usage. Mm. So these are all uh, things that they count. So these are the things that you need to educate at your primary and secondary level. Mm. So your youth is already ready for climate change. Mm. They know why we're doing this. Uh, and they're already uh, warmed up from their school. So before they reach to uh, youth. Yeah, because I mean, ultimately, it's a lot easier to get um, the, the younger generation to adapt to new things. It's usually with the older generations that it could be quite challenging um, to get them on board because people yeah. are usually set in their ways. <laughs> see, uh, this is something very common. Uh, I mean, uh, you see that uh, the old age, I mean, our, my age, our age, uh, we are not behaving well. Mm. I would see that, you know, uh, personally, uh, we need to behave. Uh, in terms of uh, behave, not, I'm not in, a, in a wrong term, 
Uh, we need to be good uh, with our nature, uh, with our mother nature. And we need to see uh, what are the do's and don'ts again that we can comply with. There's so many ads, there's so many campaigns by United Nations, UNICEF, UNESCO, you name it, uh, WHO run globally towards uh, waste management uh, until uh, the e-mobility. Hmm. But we as our generation, what are we doing? You know, we are not moving forward with it. We need to move forward. If we move forward, we are going to act as a teacher to our youth and our children. Role model, the role behavior. Model. This is where you come as a role model. All right. So, um, yes, I would love to elaborate on the, the education of the, the youth in primary schools. See, and, uh, at the primary and secondary level, uh, when I talk to uh, them and I tell them, uh, the faculty, the management, you need to teach them the e-mobility factors, sustainable factors, waste management factors, and they're doing that. Mm. So again, it's, uh, it's, it's your, your role modeling for mm. your children, uh, which is your youth. Most definitely. And people definitely have to be open to also learning from the youth, like you said. Yeah. Um, the, the students that you do teach uh, on primary school level, they go home and they discuss it with their, fir- yeah. with their uh, families, their mom and their dad. And then that's also just cyclical again. Yeah, because these are your future uh, consumer market, uh, Mag. You need to understand that you, if you are looking to cap and, uh, and capitalize or commercialize uh, uh, in terms of um, doing business, or even to uh, to have that vision created, you need to capitalize this time mm-hmm. with them. You may need to make, make them ready for it. I mean, uh, me and you put together, or us, uh, probably I, we have life of another 20, 30 years mm-hmm. uh, left. So the world belongs to them. Yes. Uh, world belongs to, as I always say, Greta Thunberg, mm-hmm. who's been doing a lot of you know activism towards that, which is true. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for, for being a guest on my podcast. And I most certainly learned a tremendous amount today. And um, I most definitely look forward to, to seeing you on the public stage uh, advocating for sustainability. Yes. Uh, Such an honor to meet you. Thank you so much for your kind words. I'm always uh, available uh, towards leadership, uh, towards vision development, which I always do at a lot of events in public speaking, mm-hmm. uh, be it in events autonomous mobility events, electric vehicle summits, conferences, Mm -hmm. also at the uh, uh, technology universities Mm -hmm. and uh, UAE and in Oman. So Mm -hmm. I'm available uh, to make a difference in my own way. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is my passion. And this is Mm -hmm. something that I have created in my own self to do better Mm -hmm. for the future of my children and your children. I'm very, very grateful um, and, you know, admire your... your, um contribution to sustainability and like you Thank said you. changing yeah. the uh, the future for our youth yeah this is a small part that i'm doing and uh, i would like uh, collectively together that uh, we can bring a sustainable change mm-hmm. that's why i always say in uh, every time let's go electric uh, mm-hmm. because it is something at least we are doing uh, we, mm-hmm. we, are, we are planning or we are creating a vision to reach mm-hmm. uh, uh, towards net zero future mm-hmm. Well, uh, thank you very much. And I look forward to collaborating with you in the future. Thank you so much, Mike. And if you have one message for our viewers and for our listeners um, to really, you know, take a step back and give them something to think about, what would it be? Okay. My message to society centers on transformation and sustainability. I imagine a future where clean and efficient mobility isn't, uh, isn't just an option, but a shared commitment. It involves embracing innovation, and embracing electric vehicles as a significant stride towards a greener, more sustainable world towards an zero future. So let's redefine mobility as more than just a transportation, but as a collective approach towards our environmental impact. Together, we can make this positive change uh, towards our greener roads, because after all, there's no planet B. Mm. Well, that is definitely, um, it gives me something to think about as well. Truly is an honor. You are a visionary and a pioneer. (laughs) 